I said, hip, hop, hibbity hop. I bet you're here to talk about hot stocks. <laughs> you see what happens when you forget to take your medication on time? I'm John Zadar. I am the host of On Top and Hot. And this is July 11th. It is Tuesday, 7-11. So what we do on this show is we try to have a little bit of fun, but we are dead serious about finding stocks under five bucks that have potential to put money in our pockets. What I'm talking about are hot penny stocks. Now, when I go searching for hot penny stocks, I don't mess around with the news or the filings, not until I find a chart with heat. I'll run over to my trading platform, Thinkorswim. I'll put in a scan for double zero one to three dollars. And I'll scroll down to 20% and I open up the chart. And then I click each company going down the line, 19%, 18%, 17%. And I'm looking for charts that have heat. Don't even know what company I'm looking at. I'm just looking at the chart. And I'm looking for a breakout setup or a lot of volume coming in or a bunch of big bounces. When I find some heat, then I go rummaging around through the press releases and the filings looking for that catalyst. And these are the sort of stocks I like to play. These are the sort of stocks I share with you. And I got three of those for you today. So let's jump on into the first sticker. This is sticker TRIQ, Trackic Inc. Now I'm gonna be the first to admit, this chart is not everything we would hope it to be. Yeah, she's climbing, she's crossing strong SMAs and she's taking gains. The problem? <laughs> it's that volume. It is critically low. It is under, under the radar right now. And to be completely honest, I really don't understand why. She's in business, waste management. She's making money, not a lot, but they are making money. And they just had two huge pieces of news just come out. And one of those pieces of news talk about a lot more money that's going to be coming in. So I'm thinking right now is a real good time to be taking a look at this company. So Trick finished today at $2.20 with 10% gains today. She is on the middle tier of the OTC, the QB. This is literally the better tier. It's better because they have to audit their financials. Man, that is good for us. Getting a CPA to do all the accounting, now we've got fundamentals. Now we can weigh up the company. That makes them more transparent, more trustworthy. Speaking of trustworthy, they've got that verified profile and transfer agent verified I'm always telling you about, so they look good. They've got independent directors. You only need these if you're gonna uplist. I'm sure they used them coming from the pink up to the QB. But why are they still there? You only need them if you're gonna uplist. So maybe they've got aspirations of going even farther. And they tell us she is a shell risk. Now, I find this confusing because she's got money on the books. And shell risk means they're in business and not making any money. So I am a little confused by that. So what does Track It do? Well, they are a waste management company working with technology. Track It Inc. is a technology-enabled environmental services company. The company currently provides solutions for food waste processing and waste management. This includes on-site digesters for food waste processing, along with cloud-based software tracking and analytic solutions. And the company has focused all their energy on the long-term sustainability of environmental services. So let's, <laughs> do we have to? Let's take a look at this volume. There you go, folks. Not very much at all. She did 120 shares today. No, not 120,000, 120 shares. Her average is 3,400 shares a day. So yeah, she's been under the radar and now she is under, under the radar. Looking at the share structure for the company, well, this is good news. I have verified this. We have an outstanding share count of about 34 million and a very, very small float of 2.2 million. Folks, when the volume comes back into this stock with that float, we could easily see a very strong run. Taking a look at those financials. All right, as you can see, at the end of 2022, they didn't have $1. They had $1,000. We got to put three zeros behind any of the numbers down here. Not a lot. Looking at the quarterly, it gets even more confusing. We just saw $1,000 for the entire year of 2022. Well, here the last quarter, it says they lost 1.1 million. Something's going on and I don't know what it is. So some more due diligence will be necessary if you want the answer to that one. 
I see their first quarter in 2023, they were back in the black with $65,000. And as I said, the news that just came out is gonna change this in a huge way. Taking a look at those disclosures, we do have some current disclosures here. We've got an SC13D, this is a new investor. Somebody who bought so many shares, they're now a partner in the company. It was uh, Glenn Martin Miller. He bought about 7 million shares and now owns 17% of the company. And these Form 3s, these tell us how many shares the insiders own. So if you care to know, that's the information right there. All right, let's go take a look at that catalytical news now. Outside of those two pieces of news I was referring to, there really isn't any other news to consider. I mean, they've got news, but the most current goes back to January of 2022. So we're not going to look at that. The two pieces of news we have here come from May 24th and June 22nd. Taking a look at that one from May 24th. The company today announced that it has closed the acquisition of Titan Trucking. The company now plans to shift its focus to providing traditional and alternative environmental services. Titan they offer a range of environmental services, including solid waste collection, recycling, and trucking to businesses located primarily in Michigan's rapidly growing marketplace. That next piece of news that came out June 22nd, the company tells us that they announced the wholly owned subsidiary Titan Trucking has just signed an agreement to purchase recycle waste services. RWS is an environmentally responsible waste and recycling hauler and service provider based in Sylvania, Ohio. It specializes in waste facility management and the provision of roll-off, long-haul, and waste diversion services throughout Northwest Ohio and Southeast Michigan. The company intends to rebrand itself as Titan Environmental Solutions over the upcoming months, a name that represents its new focus. This transaction with RWS is expected to close in the third quarter of 2023. Now this is a big deal because the company really isn't making any money, are they? Well, check this out. Through the management of multiple waste processing facilities for both Fortune 500 and municipal customers by providing waste collection and hauling services, RWS achieved revenue of over $22 million last year operating a fleet of over 150 pieces of equipment. $22 million, and I bet they do more this year. Do you think the company's interested in that? I think they are. I think the investors are as well. Let's go take a look at that chart. As we always do, we're gonna do our charting on Thinkorswim, the free trading platform you get from TD Ameritrade. So we are looking at Trackic Inc, ticker T-R-I-Q. This is a six month, four hour view. Now you can see she hasn't had a lot of volume here. It's been really low here recently. Back here, that big bar, that is 50,000 shares. Here we had 28,000 shares. So she hasn't really been doing a lot, but she's been very volatile. Back in January, we had a low of a penny. In March, we had a high of $5. Folks, that is a 50,000% gain. If you had spent $100 down here, you would have made $50,000 on that $100 investment right there. She fell back down to $0.36 cents at the beginning of June, and right now we are at $2.20. You can see she came out from underneath all of her SMAs, crossed that 20, beeline to the 50, and she's been pushing ever since then. No 200 on the chart. 50 is the strongest, and she's looking good right now, even with the little bit of volume she's getting. Oscillators are incredible. PPO, percentage price oscillator, and MACD are both pushing up, looking strong. Our RSI is just underneath the overbought at 69.8. Coming down to our 20 day, one hour view. Well, that's a beautiful chart. You've got your low bubble on this side of the screen and your high bubble on that, going from 60 cents to $2.20. So over the last 20 days, you've had about 350% gains. She got up on top of that 50 right there, and she is not looking back. She's climbing and going sideways, climbing and going sideways. Oscillators are looking great. All of them are strong. Every single one of them is pushing up right now, and all of our SMAs are starting to turn up. Five day, five minute view. Not a lot to look at. There hasn't been a lot of trading, but it's all uphill. 
every single bar here, the low is higher than the one before. Higher lows are what you're looking for. She is floating on a nine day SMA. There's not a lot of volume, but when this volume comes back in with 2.2 million shares, she's already showing that she wants to grow. They just made those deals. What do you expect's gonna happen? I think so too. So put trick on your charts. Trick or treat, don't you want the treat? <laughs> This next stock comes from the OTC market and it's more than hot. It exploded today, folks. This is ticker F-U-U-N, Future Net Inc. She finished the day at three cents with a 4,900% gain. And that's a legitimate gain. She started the day off at triple zero six. Unbelievable, especially considering she's a shell company. They don't have any business. They don't have any revenue. They don't have any news to even consider. All we've got is the one hot catalyst, which I am gonna share with you. The problem here is, is that she's pink limited. This means she is late on one or more of her financial filings, and that's a big deal. If they don't get them caught up in time, they will be yanked off of the OTC market and thrown down to the expert market. Now that's not a delisting, it's more like a timeout, a penalty box. When they get thrown down there, their shares cannot be bought or sold, and they'll stay there until they get their financials caught up. Then they'll come back onto the open market. And if you're invested in them when they go on the expert market, you're in limbo with them until they come out. The company does have a verified profile and a transfer agent verified, so they look good in that regard. Now being a shell company, they're not doing anything, so I got nothing to tell you there. So let's look at that relative volume. Whoa. Big jump today. She jumped from 1,700 shares up to 805,000. That's not even a million shares and she did 4,900% gains today. Why do you think that is? I'll tell you why that probably happened is because she's got a low float. We've only got 8 million shares in the float. Now we have a huge outstanding share count, 450 million. But the insiders, they tell us they own 442 million of the shares. Whew. Well, that leaves us with only 8 million. So I am liking this a lot. Financials, because they're a shell company, we've got nothing on the books yet. So all we've got left are those disclosures. Well, thank God for disclosures. We haven't got any news here. The only catalyst we got is right here. Remember, this company is Pink Limited. That means they're late on one or more of their financial filings. <laughs> this company was really late with a lot of them. The last filing they put in was at the end of 2020. They haven't had any quarterly or annual reports since then. Well, they just filed them all, every single one of them on July 9th. So everything looks good here. It looks like they're getting ready to go back to pink, except for one thing. With every annual report, and they've got two of them here, you have to have an attorney letter. Since these are disclosures, you don't get a CPA to look at them, so they have an attorney look them over. Not the numbers, just the textual information. He verifies that that's correct. Once that attorney letter is in, this will go back to pink, and she should jump. Now, there was one other thing I want to show you, because I noticed this was filed on the 6th, supplemental information. Supplemental report for custodianship. So I jumped into the information here. I got this out of their quarterly report. And since we're here, I just want to share some other tidbits of information. Back in December of last year, they only had 31 million outstanding shares. Now they're up to 450 million. There was a big kick up in the last six months. They are a shell company. They've ticked that box. It means they're not making any money and they have not had a change of control. But what caught my attention is this custodianship. Harry Haining Zhang was appointed as custodian of the corporation on June 14, 2022 by the 8th District Court of Nevada. Now a custodian is in charge of the company. They may have a CEO, president, CFO, but a custodian is in charge, but he has no ownership in the company. He has no investment in the company per se. He's just there to make sure the company gets off on the right foot, takes care of their dirty laundry. Well, I found all the way down here a name that I'm quite familiar with, right there, Karen Courier. Karen Courier 
has been around for quite a while. The last few years, she has been a goddess on the OTC markets. She was a custodian. Custodians are put in place by courts to help companies get back on their feet. She went out and she would get companies on the expert market, companies where the management had abandoned the boat and there was nobody there. They'd never come off the expert market. She got hold of them, she cleaned them up, took care of all the dirty laundry, took care of all of their filings at her expense. And then she finds a deal for the companies, gets them pink and gets them back on the market. Karen Courier is responsible for ILUS, I-L-U-S, huge success. And she's got a lot of companies under her belt. Well, she is no longer the custodian of this company. She was for a while, but she isn't anymore. But she is still relate, related to the company. She is a auditor. She is also a consultant. And I have noticed anytime Karen Courier is involved, things happen. Now, I've seen all these filings come in right now. That means they've got a head of steam going on. Filings aren't free, so they're catching up. It looks like things are about to get into gear. What have they got up their sleeve now that everything is caught up except our attorney letters? Those are the last things we need. All right, let's go take a look at that chart now. Not much to see, but we can learn from it. This is ticker F-U-U-N, Future Net Inc. That is a six-month, four-hour view, believe it or not. And it's a good view because what we learn here is she was not on the expert market. This is April, May, June, July. She has been trading, just not a lot. And she's been flat. But of course she has. She had more than a dozen financials that were three years old. Nobody wanted to get into this stock. Everybody thought for sure she was going to go to the expert market. Then a flood of them come out on the 9th and they're all caught up. All we're waiting for is the attorney letters. Everybody's gotten excited. She shot from triple zero six up to three cents, hit a high, and has not pulled back. That is where she's at right now. Lots of volume came in today. And look at our oscillators. They're all on fire. All of them are out of this world and pushing to the moon. 20-day, one-hour view. Well, you can see she is steadily climbing on her nine-day SMA. And the bars, each low is higher than the one before. Everything is perfect, and our oscillators are even getting hotter. Our RSI is clear up there at 84 right now. Looking at our five day, five minute, there you go. There's your triple zero six in this corner and your three cents in that corner. Wow, folks, that is virtually 5,000% gains. A hundred dollar bill invested down here got you $5,000. If you had put $500 in down here, you would have had $25,000 right now. Unbelievable. Oscillators are still strong and still pushing up. Not a lot of volume, but it is growing. It is pushing up. I am liking fun. She's a clean shell company. This is what you're looking for for mergers and acquisitions. And now that they've put all this work into it, I don't think they're going to drop the ball. I think they've got plans. I would be expecting a press release coming out anytime soon. But first off, we got to get those attorney letters for those annual reports. Once those come out, I bet we get a bounce on that as well. F-U-N-N -N, or F-U-U-N. <laughs> Either way, it's going to be fun. Last ticker we're taking a look at comes from the OTC. This is a Canadian crypto platform company. This is WonderFi Technologies, ticker W-O-N-D-F. Now her chart is looking good right now. It's one of those atypical breakout charts with the 200-day SMA coming down and leveling off. Well, she's already tried to break out once. It was looking good, but it failed. Now she's doing it again, and again, it's looking good. But this time, we've got strong catalysts. We've got some big news. They just made a huge deal that is, well, definitely going to change things for them. I'm not sure if you're aware of it, but America is launching their crypto dollar right now. And there's actually going to be two different types of dollars for America. The consumer dollar, the Fed coin, and then you've got your business dollar, which is going to be the wholesale dollar, Fed now. Fed now has already been launched. It's out there. There's over a hundred banks that have it. What this is doing is giving more validation to the crypto market. I think anything involved with crypto right now is probably going to start to grow. And this company is all about crypto. The largest crypto company in Canada right now, as far as I can tell. 
So under five technologies, she finished the day at 17 cents today with just a little bit over 23% gains. Another one on the middle tier of the OTC, getting her financials audited. Also has that verified profile and transfer agent. So everything looks great here. Now, we do have a description here that tells us a little bit about the company, but I know we can find a better description. And one of the best places to get that information is from a financial, especially if it's been audited. Audited financials have a ton more information than disclosures do. Matter of fact, they give us a real nice history overview of what they've been doing since they came on the market, which they did August 30th of 2021 through a reverse takeover, a reverse merger with Ostpro Energy Corporation. Then about a half year later, in March of 2022, the company created a new subsidiary called BitBuy Holdings. And through BitBuy, they made an acquisition of First Ledger Corporation. And the acquisition of FLC provides the company with Canada's largest approved crypto marketplace and one of the fastest growing crypto platforms in Canada. A couple months later, on the 4th of July, the company acquired Coinberry Limited, which is the second licensed crypto asset trading platform in Canada, now wholly owned by WonderFi. And then finally, on November 9th of 2022, the company acquired all the issued and outstanding shares of Blockchain Foundry. So they've been very busy building their crypto company up, and they're not done yet. Let's take a look at that relative volume for the company now. Looks like WonderVi had a good day, about tripling her volume, going from 135,000 shares to 548,000 shares. Share structure for WonderVi. All right, we got a high outstanding share count of 650 million, roughly. Now, they suggest that the float could be 67 million. That's what it was back in August of last year. Hopefully, that's what it is, because it can be anything up to 648 million. Financials for WonderFi. We've got nothing on the annual. Looking at the quarterly, we do have money here. 200,000, 2.2 million, 2.4, and then nothing for the last quarter of 2022. And I don't know why. First quarter of 2023, they had $1.8 million. Now what strikes me as interesting here is that they're not paying anything for the money they're making. That's what you get when you're dealing with digital products. You don't have to package anything, mail anything. You don't have to buy anything to make your product. You just do it all digitally. There's no expense for that. So they get to keep every single penny that they make. Disclosures for WonderFi. All right, we have nothing here since 2022 and all of their financials and annual reports are here. So they're all looking good. So let's jump on into that news. Thankfully, we got a ton of information out of the financial. How convenient was that? That saves us a lot of work having to rummage around through the press releases. Now we've seen that they've already made a bunch of acquisitions, but I told you they weren't done yet. Well, we got two pieces of news here to consider. One that came out on June 2nd and one that came out on June 27th. The one that came out June 2nd, the company, through its subsidiary, BitBuy Technologies, announces the addition of Cardano to its on-chain staking offerings. Alongside Ethereum, Solana, Polygon, and Polkadot, the inclusion of Cardano represents the most tokens available to be staked on any Canadian registered crypto trading platform. Since its inception on November 28, 2022, BitBuy staking has experienced remarkable adoption from crypto investors, with more than 42% of monthly active BitBuy users currently engaging in crypto staking. In just the past two weeks alone, we've seen a 15% increase in total Canadian dollars being staked. They are staking the assets at a one-to-one -one ratio. And that other news press that came out on the 27th is huge news. It's a merger between three companies, CoinSquare, CoinSmart, and WonderFi. This has been approved by the Supreme Court of British Columbia. WonderFi is going to acquire 100% of CoinSquare and CoinSmart. And each shareholder of CoinSquare and CoinSmart will receive a dividend for each share they hold. Now, 
I don't know what that is. They tell us we can find that information in their circular in connection with this. I haven't found that circular yet. But we've got a huge merger here. CoinSmart, CoinSquare, WonderFi, and all those other acquisitions that they made. They are cornering the market on the crypto exchanges in Canada. That's what it looks like to me. They're looking hot, and I'm liking them. And I'm liking that chart, too. Let's go take a look at it. Checking out WonderFi Technologies, ticker W-O-N-D-F. Six-month, four-hour view here. Our low bubble was at the end of December of eight cents, and then she ran all the way up here to 32 cents halfway into January. That is like 400% run right there. But she broke that 200 way too early. You see how steep it is? She could not keep her footing up there. She slipped and fell, came right on back down. Then she made another attempt here, but didn't hold that one either. And now she's doing it again. And as you can see, our volume is starting to grow. She is pushing the price up, rolling around, but she is getting up there. And today was a very strong day for her. Osculators are very strong. PPO is way up there. MACD is way up there with the green bars accumulating and our RSI is at 72. It is red hot right now. Looking at that 20 day, one hour view, she's pretty much just going sideways here, but she is pretty much also staying above that 200 day SMA. And then it was just today, only today she decided to take off, jumping down here from 13 cents up to 17 cents. Osculators are still on fire. Look, every single one of them is pushing up or red. That's what you wanna find on any stock that you're trading. That's a perfect technical setup. Five day, five minute. Again, we are just going sideways here, riding on the 50, the 20, the 200. They're all tied up in a knot here. And then finally they break apart and she jumps immediately to the nine day SMA, bouncing off of the 20. Everything is looking strong here. She finished the day at 17 cents, the high, and did not pull back yet. All of our SMAs are turning up right now and our osculators are still hot. Everything is churned up and ready to start climbing again. I'm liking this company, especially because it's involved with crypto. Now, personally, I'm not into crypto, but I do like to follow markets when they start to move and maybe I'll make a change. And right now it doesn't matter if you're the crypto market or the stock market dealing with crypto. Crypto is getting a lot of love and attention right now, so don't overlook it. W-O-N-D-F, I'm liking it. Do you? Not the type of stocks we normally look at. I mean, we do look at stocks that are taking gains, but wow, that first one with 50,000% gains, you think she could do that again? Another one, we had 5,000% gains just today. These are hot stocks, folks. And I like to bring these to you, and I hope you enjoy them too. And if you do, how about showing me some love? Squeeze me a little berry juice by smashing that like button. Or better yet, subscribe, and I will keep doing my best to bring you hot stocks. But remember, I only share some of the information with you. There's always more to know. So do your own DD behind me. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks. Thank you.